The perfect strings for any instrument, Marcin's Laws. I'm Vector C, and if you're like me, you've wondered how to choose the right strings for your instrument. Maybe you worry your current guitar strings are wrong, maybe some feel loose, others are too tight, and so they don't all bend the same way. Today, I'd like to explain how to get the perfect strings for your instrument, and how to get each string at the same tension. We can find our answer by using Marcin's Laws which depicts the relationship between four variables to give the fundamental frequency. F, the frequency we want our string. 2L, twice the length of our string that vibrates. T, the amount of tension pulling the string. And U, the mass per unit length of the material. Starting with the frequencies we want, we will use E standard tuning. E, A, D, G, B, E, from low frequency to high. If low E is 82.41 cycles per second, or hertz, the unit that frequency is measured in, then our desired frequencies are shown here. Fantastic. Second, the length that our string vibrates is the only portion of the string that is relevant, and many guitars scales lengths measure around 25 and a half inches, or 0.648 meters, with twice that value being 1.296 meters. Since each guitar string is the same length, we will have the length of 0.648 meters for all six strings. Tension is a pulling force and can be changed with the tuning pegs. The tension we need is where your preferred playstyle is introduced. If you want notes that are easy to bend, you may want to look around the 60 to 80 newtons of force range, and if you want sharper notes that stay in tune no matter how hard you strum, your range may work around 80 to 100 plus newtons of force. If you go too low, your strings will contact the fretboard, and if they're too high, they'll obviously break. Today's example will use 70 newtons for its tension variable, as this is what I use for my acoustic guitar. The final variable, the mass per unit length, is quite simply the mass of the string divided by the length of our string. It can be thought of as density in one dimension. This is where the magic happens, as we'll solve for this variable and we'll reveal what strings we should use. Here, I'm going to rearrange the equation in order to get our mass per unit length by itself. So, if we enter our chosen variables for the low E string, we have 82.41 Hz, 0.648 meters, and 70 newtons. The result of this is a linear density of roughly 0.00614 kilograms per unit length. Then, since we have this value, we now do refer to this chart I made. This chart gives you four string options and the mass per unit length or linear density for each available diameter. The left portion shows the values for plain steel strings and the remainder shows the value for three types of wounded strings. For our low E string mass per unit length of 0.00614, we match fairly closely at a 0.042 inch diameter 8020 bronze wound string. You can try using this chart to find the closest diameter that would almost fit for the other two wound string types, nickel plated and phosphor bronze. Our A string has a linear density of 0.00344, which matches close to a 0.032 inch diameter 8020 bronze wound string. Here are the chosen strings with all six frequencies and their linear densities. So there it is. These are the strings I picked for my guitar. You can substitute any of these values to your specific stringed instrument you own, and you can be certain that each of your strings are at the same vibrating tension. One word of caution is to be careful about the total tension on your instrument's neck as you'll need the entire length of the string from the ball to the tuning pegs to account for the total tension. These vary depending on your headstock. The total average force on the guitar neck is about 890 newtons or 148 newtons per string. To get the total tension, you take the vibrating tension, then multiply it by the total length divided by the vibrating length. What I find fascinating to discover is having the strings be wounded rather than unwounded has no difference on the tension needed to get the string up to the right frequency 
since it's only dependent on the linear density. And this explains why our strings didn't feel right before. Some were too heavy and therefore too loose. Some were too light and therefore too taut. Now that we understand why, we can pick the right strings for our instrument. That's it. Thank you for watching, thank you for being curious about your instrument, and if you're interested in, in learning more about music, then subscribe. If you struggle with music theory, if you struggle words, if you struggle with music theory, like me, you will be interested in my future video where I reveal a new music theory that will absolutely reshape and expand music for the foreseeable future. Again, like and subscribe for more. This has been Vector C.